Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Well, it looks like the global battle around microchips has just entered a new phase. Last week, China announced the creation of photolithographic machines capable of producing chips at a very high level technological process above 8 nm. Now, this is a leap of over a decade and a half for progress for China in these technologies. So why is this so important and how will it change the global semiconductor market? Not only for China, but its allies in the BRICS like India and Russia. Now, it's difficult to find technology in the 21st century that doesn't use microchips. It is in fact the case that chips are related as a field for almost every other industry. Plus, you have to understand, it's a technically complex industry that requires specific competencies and equipment. I mean, the number of countries with the capability to do this in principle is limited. Taiwan, mainland China, South Korea, Japan, the USA, with almost no others. There's also a significant capability gap even within this group, with the most advanced microchips currently produced only by Taiwan, represented by TSMC Corporation. While the production of semiconductors is conducted in a few countries and few companies, the production of the means of production for them is almost completely monopolised by one company on a global scale. Now we're talking about photolithographic machines which are necessary for applying the pattern to a board. It's a kind of machine for chips. I mean, formally, such machines are produced by several companies, but the truly modern, up-to-date, latest technology chips can only be made on equipment from the Dutch company ASML. Now, this company was once a small division of the once great Dutch electronics company Philips. But it's now independent as it's grown rapidly as Philips has disappeared. And it's had some considerable excess by constantly investing in ultraviolet photolithography, a technology has been developing for decades. I mean, despite experiencing large losses over a number of years, it persevered with the technology and it finally gained traction in the 2010s. Now, from 7NM onwards, the majority of manufacturers utilise uh, EVU equipment as their primary choice, with the exception of China, which is why I'll talk about that later in the video, so stick around for the details. Now, by the end of the last decade, uh, ASML had become the dominant player in the market. Now, before I continue, I'd like you to make a, an appeal. If you enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop them. You can do this by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen and making a small donation. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking all of you just for watching the video because I do and really appreciate all of you. Now it's worth noting that the cost of a photolithographic uh, machine equipment and its maintenance represents about 40% of the total cost of chip production. In the price of an ASML machine is comparable to that of an Airbus airliner. And in terms of its physical dimension, one such machine exceeds the size and dimensions of a r regular double-decker bus and is probably 1,000 times the weight. Indeed, it's actually a mini factory in its own right. I mean, ASML's t monopoly position in the market enables it to set prices at its own discretion. Now, it wouldn't be accurate to suggest that the Dutch company exploits the position frequently, but it does. However, the lack of competition um, causes concern among other chip manufacturers. Plus, there's been instances of delayed deliveries. Most notably in recent years, the issue of semiconductor production has become highly politicised. I mean, firstly, the issues emerge with China, which increases its market share every year on year. In the early 2000s, China's share of global production was slightly above zero, and now it's above 20%. Now, this coincided with a deterioration in the US-China relations in the artificial intelligence race, which requires significant quantities of semiconductors. Now, the US administration introduced restrictions on the supply of chips to China, which then had a knock-on effect on US companies and market participants from other countries. However, Chinese companies continue to match, in fact, to their own chips, which are of highly advanced and modern design. I mean, 
For example, the Chinese company Yangtze Memory Technologies, YTMC, expanded the production of 3D NAND memory chips in 2023. These are used, for example, in the production of solid-state drives. Uh, Huawei, which is anticipated to be the first to feel the impact of the sanctions, significantly produced its own production of chips last year. I mean, China successfully established mass production of semiconductors using the 7NM process technology. Not the most modern, but sufficient for the vast majority of tax and sufficient quantities, which provides a respite for its local electronics manufacturers. I mean, the only way to exert influence on China's position in the industry was to restrict the supply of photolithographic equipment. It should be noted that ASML declined to supply EUV to China some time ago due to pressure from the USA. Now, it was assumed that without these machines, the production of 7 nanometer chips would be unfeasible. However, the Chinese have demonstrated that previous generation equipment is adequate for this process technology, utilising deep ultraviolet, which is DUV technology. Now, this approach is somewhat less efficient than using EUV, but it's more profitable given the enormous demand in the market and the generous subsidies for the manufacturers by the Chinese government. So it's theoretically possible to use these machines for higher process technology, as in 5NM. Now, this summer, the US once again exerted pressure on China's counterparts in Asia and Europe. And the Dutch government has announced its intention to consider imposing restrictions on the maintenance of DUV machines in China. Now, it's worth noting that even before the sanctions were imposed, the Chinese were purchasing equipment in reserve, which means that currently they've got enough supply. However, if you don't carry out the requisite maintenance work, these could cause serious issues. Now, for ASML, this represents a significant challenge, given the company generates over half of its sales in China. Plus, China has significant leverage because it could impose counter sanctions. As a result, no decision has yet been reached. Nevertheless, China's reliance on foreign equipment still renders its position vulnerable. In China, only one company, Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment, SMEE, produces such machines. Until recently, however, its capacity was limited to quite primitive machines using 90NM process technology, which was considered modern back in 2003. I mean, this equipment is sufficient for producing chips used in military equipment. Consequently, the US argument that the measures are being taken to limit the capabilities of the Chinese army and navy are unconvincing. The restrictions are prompting the Chinese to pursue import substitution and the development of national alternatives with the goal of establishing their comprehensive production cycle beginning with the actual equipment. Now, the construction of a photolithographic machine is a highly intricate process that demands a great deal of expertise. I mean, it's not feasible to operate on the basis of immediate necessity or any cost. Nevertheless, in mid-September, they said that an unnamed company believed to be SMEE had developed two machines capable of servicing 20A and ANM processes. That's still a less competitive position than ASML, but for the Chinese, this process and progress is significant. So it does look like they've achieved a significant breakthrough in the semiconductor industry, developing their capabilities in a, what is considered a relatively short period of time. And this is sufficient to produce microcircuits for both military and civilian industries. In fact, the only remaining in area for China to develop is the production of some of the most advanced computer equipment, in particular modern processors. However, uh, it should be noted that the current status of the production of these machines is unclear. It's not sh uncertain whether this refers to serial production or they've only just developed prototypes. However, in any case, if the equipment is operational, integrating it into production will not be a significant challenge, given that Beijing is committed to achieving complete independence from foreign suppliers in the current market environment. I mean, the potential for operating at a loss during the initial stages until the economies of scale are achieved is not really a concern for China and never has been. 
Now, it was reported a year ago that SMEE had also registered patents for AUV technology equipment. I mean, not yet clear whether we're discussing machines that will soon be built and put into uh, production or theoretical research. If it's the former, it will be possible to state that China's finally caught up with the SML and its need for foreign contractors will be much lower. However, this will not eliminate the need for foreign contractors entirely as the players in the industry will require many parts from different countries to produce the chips, so trade will continue. But this is a truly global industry and if China can ensure the production of new equipment, it will be possible to actually finally show the Americans that their sanctions have not only failed their intended uh, uh, purpose, but they've had the opposite effect. China is now attempting to localise its semiconductor production as much as possible in order to avoid restrictions, which we've not seen uh, over the past few years. I mean, China's anticipated achievement illustrate that despite the intricate nature of photolithographic machine production, the objective of fostering the relevant industry is achievable under certain circumstances. Now, this could have a significant impact on the global industry landscape, potentially nullifying the impact of sanctions. I mean, third party consumers stand to benefit from the increased competition, which could lead to sector wide improvements in lower prices. Everybody benefits from that now. Now, for Russia, this could simply uh, find the procurement of chips for both military and civilian applications and stop them having to steal them from Ukrainian washing machines. <laughs> anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And you can help me fund the channel by clicking on the thanks button, making a small donation. And if you uh, want to comment, do comment. Love to read your comments, love to respond. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.